Hey, I'm DIY Gemini, and today we're tackling the wood slat wall with a little surprise. Today's video is actually a second installment of the accent wall in my bedroom. In the first video, we had lime washed this whole back wall a soft beige to bring some warmth into my bedroom. Today, we're going to add some visual interest to this corner of the room as well as add some height by adding a wood slat wall with a little surprise I mentioned earlier. Here are some inspo pictures of what I've seen online, but of course, I want to put my little spin on it. I wanted mine to stick out from the existing wall instead of sticking each slat flush to the wall. I also wanted mine to feel a little bit more customized to my space, so I made some plans. I made some very meticulous plans for this project to make sure I was optimizing the wood I would be buying. As you can see from the plans, I wanted the wood to hug against the cabinet I already have, so there are two longer pieces on the left of the cabinet, and the rest are from the where the cabinet is to the ceiling. The space between each board will be the depth of my board, which is about 5 8 inch, and I will take the off cuts from the wood to make braces to attach the wood slats to the wall, as you can see in this side view here. For the wood, I ended up going to my local lumber yard, which I highly recommend. They are super helpful and knowledgeable there, and the wood quality is so much better, which means there's less knots, less sanding, and there's more straight boards. I ended up getting the 1.5 inch by 5 8 inch white pine boards. If going to a big box store is more accessible, which is completely okay, these are the prices for the comparable products. First is the white wood board, which is the cheapest, but will have more knots, be more warped, or have bends in the wood, um, or it'll have not good of a finish, which means you'll have to do more sanding and spend more time selecting a good board. Second is the select pine board. This is a couple more dollars, but you'll have less knots and a little bit better quality wood than the first option. Okay, let's get started. First, we're gonna cut the wood to length according to my plans. And then we're going to give everything a light sand with 180 grit. It's a new day and we're going to assemble our slats together. To do so, we're gonna take some scrap off cuts and use them as spacers between our slats. Have the good sides of your slats facing downward. Next, let's put on our braces. For mine, I have three big braces and then one shorter brace for the two longer pieces that's gonna go on the left of my cabinet. I originally wanted to attach the braces to all the slats from behind so you wouldn't see any fasteners from the front, but that would involve drilling way too many holes. So my next best solution was to attach the braces to the outer slats, excluding my two longer ones at the end, with screws from the back. Then we'll flip it over to the right side up and use that as a guide to put the rest of our slats. I'll show you what I mean in that part in a moment, but let's first drill into the outer slats that I want to drill into and then we'll flip it over. So what I did is drill a pilot hole with a smaller drill bit. Uh, this one is 3 and 3 30 seconds and then I took a little bit of a bigger drill bit for the top so that the head of the screw could fit into the hole. Make sure not to drill all the way down to the front of your slat. You can use a piece of masking tape on your drill bit as a guide to see how deep you can go. Now, let's carefully flip this over. I don't think I explained it as clearly when I was recording this at the time, so let me just do this here. I added a piece of scrap wood at the top to keep our slats straight when we transfer them over. Then, when transferring the boards, be sure to flip them so that the right side is facing up, because remember we faced them down before. We will then attach the rest of the slats to the front with glue and the brad nailer, and if you don't have a brad nailer, that's fine. You can use a tiny finishing nails and hammer them in. Continue to use the scrap pieces for spacers. Here I am just trimming the top of the slats to ensure we have a very even top. Okay, okay, okay. 
you know, I don't know if she's level. Yeah, she's not level, but. So like I'm off by like, maybe like a quarter inch on this side. But as long as she like has the illusion of level-ish or close enough, I'm okay with that. Because who's to say that my floors aren't level and this cabinet is level? Probably not, so it's okay. I'm gonna stain it tomorrow um, to match the wood tones, all like warmer wood tones in my room. And then we're gonna add a little surprise at the end for a little pizzazz. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I'm excited. Okay, this is turning out better than I thought. So, meticulous planning was very, <laughs> very helpful. Um, yeah, so we'll see you tomorrow. It's staining day, so it's finally warm enough to stain outside. And first, we're just going to fill all the little holes that we made with the brad nailer yesterday. So I'm just going to fill all of these with the stainable wood filler. So what I have, this is the easiest thing to use. Since this is an open bottle already, I ended up <laughs> getting this stuck. I think that's stuff frozen in there. So I just cut off the top. But normally, you could just squeeze this out. So anyways, um, so you would take a little bit on your finger there. A little bit on your finger and then a chunk and then push it into the holes and we are going to sand this out once it like dries a little bit you just press it into the holes to fill it in it's like a grainy it feels like sand after the wood filler is dry we'll sand it with 220 grit Okay, so the wood filler is dry, so it's time to sand all the faces. I'm just gonna use my power sander. I'm gonna do 220 grit, just a really soft sanding on the top, a little bit on the back, and then that will prepare us for staining. Did I mention that I don't love sanding, but it's a necessary process, so let's just go. <laughs> Okay, we're sanded and ready to go. So we're gonna use some pre-stain first, and then we'll use American Walnut to stain. Okay, so I was using a foam brush to apply the pre-stain, but don't recommend, because that's what it did to it. Probably some chemical reaction between the two where it just like deteriorated, or it's a cheap foam brush, who knows? Just use an old t-shirt instead. Okay, I think we're ready to stain, and I hope it goes well, but we are almost there! Ah! To apply the stain, you can use a white rag or an old t-shirt. Remember, you have to have them air dry flat before tossing them out, as stain can spontaneously combust, so safety first, DIY friends! Okay, to add a little fun to our slat wall, I'm going to add these LED lights in the back with from Day Better. It comes with two packs. It also comes with a little remote. And I'll show you what it looks like. So it comes in this little roll here. Turn it on. And you can change it to different colors and whatever patterns you want. So that's really cool. This comes already with a 3M stick, sticky back already. So all you have to do is just peel and stick to where we want. I'm just going to do up and down the slat walls until it gets filled up. To attach our wood slat to the wall, I'm going to be drilling from the front in between the slats into the wall. I'm just going to use four screws. That's going to just be enough for holding this together using some drywall anchors and some trim head screws. The trim head screws just have smaller heads, so you don't see the, um, the heads as much in the front, so it's going to be a little bit more camouflage. All right, so she's attached to the wall and secured, and she's looking pretty good. Honestly, it's not that bad. It, I definitely didn't stain perfectly, but it's okay. <laughs> she's on there. She's looking great. But let me show you what the lights look like behind it. Doesn't look so good. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Let me show you with the lights off. Bam! Wow. Doesn't that look cool? I love it. Such a mood. 
you change it to different colors with this one. I will link the lights in the description below. You change it to like green, red, whatever color you desire. You can put it to like um, flashing or whatever, um, or a fade in between the colors and stuff, which is really cool. Thank you for watching today's video and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel there is going to be a part three and part four to the accent wall as well to find out what's next just don't forget to follow me on instagram and tiktok at hi diy gemini you'll get first looks there and then i'll be uploading that tutorial soon all right bye